what changed that made Cleaver a viable buy on Jarvan? I remember you saying Cleaver's no good on Jarvan because constantly having their armor shred is good. I'm glad you led with that. It's good that you're you're demonstrating some thinking here. The reason why is because the, the ability haste went from 25 to 30 and Jarvan started getting some 80 ratios uh, specifically on the W and I think they jacked up like the ulti a while back and it's just a bunch of factors that led to Black Cleaver's stats being pretty decent. The biggest one the biggest change by far is not anything to do with Black Cleaver, uh, not necessarily. It's the fact that Jarvan's EQ, or sorry, the E cooldown went from well in the okay. So the, the history of the patch notes was like this. It was um, it was, I think it was like eleven or something, and then it went to thirteen, thirteen down to eleven, and then it stayed at a static twelve, and then now it's down to an eleven or or ten. I forgot. I don't know. It's been like literal years of patches, so I gotta go check. Let me recant the uh, patch history to you. Oh, I went the wrong runes last game. Interesting. Let's get into this cloak here, even though they have any. Alright, so Jarvan's E went down to... When the fuck was this? Yeah, so it went from 12 down to 12 to 10. 10 is the lowest E cooldown that Jarvan has ever had in history. In the history of League of Legends, from what I can remember. And I've been playing this game for fuck... I've been playing Jarvan since like Season 3 and Season 4, so... The fact that we got one or two extra seconds, I guess. One, if you think about like the lowest it was before that, which was 11. Um, made it so that Ability Haste became the absolute top tier stat. Not that it wasn't already... It's just it became even more important because now you can realistically get like two EQs in a fight, right? You can not only survive, but you can also get multiple EQs in a fight as long as you're stacking the haste and the shields, which means that you're going to get a, a, one of the strongest knock... Uh, I think, okay, so the strongest knockups in the game off of memory is like Orin. First of all, Orin, and then like Malphite ulti, Braum close range ulti, and then I think Jarvan's EQ is one of the strongest... Like knockups, not displacements. Does that make sense? So a, a variety of factors play into why I think it's really, really uh, strong now. We're champion archetype. Uh, good, good afternoon, Sakun. What's up, bro? Which champ archetype is strong slash weak versus J4? I'm a red cane player versus J4. I mean, red cane player would fuck J4, yeah. Anyone that could beat you in attrition, for sure. But J4 doesn't have to play the attrition the proper way. You can think of J4 as like a ranged champion, eventually. Where like, you're EQing, you're getting auto, you get out. Right? And you're shielding. Right? You're doing this, you're, you're slapping them, and you're going like this every single time. So the trade that they do to you is inconsequential compared to the trade that you do to them. Anyone that can match pace like that, is just way better. Like Lee Sin? Yeah, I like Lee Sin. Because Lee Sin can buffer his Q on top of you. If he sees you Q, and he knows that you're coming towards him, you could easily just uh, tag the Lee Sin Q. Most of the time, if we're, if we're talking about like the year is 20XX, like Lee Sin versus Jarvan is just gonna be both of you staring at each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like that's that's a lot of League of Legends matchups where you just kind of stare at each other. If we're both playing it like, uh, like we're, you know, we're both playing Fox or something. And the reason why is because like Jarvan can like Q and E to poke at a distance and dodge the Lee Sin Q. If Lee Sin War jumps in to try to kick, you can buffer out, he, or Lee Sin jumps in and then he Qs you. Maybe that's the best continuation. Jarvan doesn't really have any options there. He can EQ to damage you in turn, and then try to ulti your kick. I don't know, I think it's like slightly Lee Sin favored, if we're talking about like robots fighting each other. And very Lee Sin favored if we're talking about equal skilled human beings playing each other. But obviously I'm speaking from my perspective, so like I think of it in terms of like 20xx. So if I play against Elisa and I'm I'm playing it fucking to perfection. Alright, Pike's missing. Lucian's missing. Wukong just went towards his red. He's he's omitting his raptors from the clear. Why? Because he wants to Because he wants to match bot side. He wants to match bot side, he anticipates my gank. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the bot side crab because I know I can't get it. My bot lane's getting pushed in. Yasuo's useless until level three. 
Lucian plus the Pike are a little bit too aggressive, especially in tandem with the Wukong. It's a lot of burst up front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smite this and immediately head to the top side crab. Because I know that I'm not going to be able to get the bot side crab. This guy's actually going for a gank. Nice flash. That was a really good flash. Now the game has changed. Because this guy's a little bit lower, I can actually go for him. He's, I wonder if he's going to check this. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. Okay, as long as that guy doesn't get it. I don't mind taking risks. That's how you get better. He's pinging to go here. I'm going to use the bush to block vision. So if Malphite comes up, he doesn't see me. Actually, no, he was just warding. Wukong did 16 CS. That means he did these three and the red. He has his Raptors to do. Again, camp spawn after 2 minutes and 15 seconds. We can take the second Gromp. I have smite in 15. Let's just check if he's coming towards us. He most likely just went towards the Krugs. I'm going to ping this. Ping the lane gank. I need to get this. If I don't get this camp, it's going to be really rough for me. I have to hope that he didn't just take his Raptors in back. Taking Raptors in back is very smart from him. That way he covers his top side, even though he's leaving his Krugs open. Because the likelihood that I go for the Gromp versus the Krugs is like 99 to 1. Alright, oh, looks like he wasn't smart. He didn't do it. If he's not here already, he's not going to be here at all for like a little bit. So I'm going to take this. I'll drop my flag even though it shows that I'm here as well. Just because it's better for me to know if he's coming versus better for him to know if I'm here. I hope that makes sense to people. It's more useful for me because I need to know if I need to get out. This guy's full HP. We can maybe get him. I'll be level 5 off the wave. I'm 30 XP off. Stun him when I'm here. No, when I'm here, you idiot. He's gonna go to the wall to flash. No? I'm not gonna EQ because he's gonna flash it. Oh shit, I messed up. Holy fuck, what the fuck? I don't understand this. Either way, if I were to land that EQ, he'd probably just flash it. Oh, he, had, he didn't have flash! Oh, big mistake for me. If I knew he didn't have flash, I would've just EQ'd right away. I only EQ'd because I saw the Wukong coming. Fucking A, dude. My bad. <coughs> yeah, he was healing too much with the, uh, the cookies and shit. Super bad. So, I mean, that's a good lesson for you guys, right? Make sure to check uh, whether they had flash. 24 CS. Yeah, he just did his boss side. Okay, let's take the crab first. Hmm. I shouldn't let them freeze like this. I'll be around. Let's force this flash. He doesn't have? I need to be fucking looking at the... Okay, yeah. I wasn't paying attention to the chat because I'm talking to you guys, right? Right, you? Take a guess. Twenty nine CS. I think he just took uh, minions from the wave, right? When we see his updated CS, we can reverse engineer whatever he's got. He did this, 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 gank. Here, here. Not here, here. Can't go back to this. 33, 37. 41. 45. No crab, I took it. If my brand and my Krugs are up, then I know... Then I have perfect information. Forty 
49. 49 with the red, 53 with the blue. You guys are gonna have to forgive me this game. I'm actually gonna flame this Pantheon. When he makes a mistake, I'm gonna give him some back. I'll wait for one crucial mistake where he probably feels bad, and I'll fucking flame him for it. can be a dive. I need to DPS them early then. Fuck, I tried to buffer over the, what's it called, the, the pike. This, this is good, 48. What's 48? Okay, he didn't take his, he didn't take either buffs, he just took the, uh, the four camps here, the 20 CS. He had a decimal, that went, that's why it went from 29 to, uh, 48, and not 49. We sorry, welcome back, bro. It's been a long, long time since I've said your name. Hello. What, in your opinion, doesn't take to prove something unconventional is worth it or wrong? Or, or sorry, worth it or working? Alright, that changed the question. That was beautiful. What he did there was he walked into his wind wall, or he dashed into his wind wall with his E. He got the Q, but you'll notice that he didn't just go into the ultimate immediately. He got the airborne Q and he used the full duration. What did he use it for? In order to EQ the Lucian, which gives him an extra stack of Steel Tempest. So when he lands, right, he can Q, and then he's got his NATO afterwards. That way you don't have to land Q, Q, and then NATO. We're not gonna ulti in case she flashes. Good. 54 CS. He just took his red and part of his Krugs. I'm not gonna go with my Raptors. I'm gonna see if he goes for it. Or I'll just stall him. I'll stall him out. That way they can't get the Lissandra. That bought enough time for Lissandra. That's good. This is a really good game for uh, Black Cleaver. I'll answer a question later, Kawhi. That's, uh, that's a lot to think about. If you think about like the standard scientific method, right? You got a hypothesis, you test it, you control for certain variables. That's not really easy in League of Legends, right? You'd have to get the same players in the same game, doing the same shit, same builds, and see how it matches up. There's just way too much variance in League of Legends to account for all of it appropriately. So you have to, in my opinion, the best way forward is to is to chunk it, to cluster it, put into groups of things. I'll give you an example of a really big group. AD champions, AP champions, range champions, maybe melee champions, right? All these sorts of clusters, 63. I buffer over that. And that's not always the best. So what you do is you get an additional layer. Okay, range champions that are within 
500 to 600 range. Okay, so short range ADCs maybe. ADCs that we don't have to we don't have to gap close too hard. Who would that be? Lucian. Uh, maybe MF, right? If they want to auto attack. Uh, who else, right? Like a bunch of champions. Samira. But even within Lucian, MF, Samira, you'll notice that they're different. Lucian goes up front and, and battles you, right? With a bunch of auto attacks. Samira tries to combo you. She's more of a caster. MF is a little bit of both, right? She can battle you up front with her, you know, her love top and her, her attack speed steroid. But she's also really good at keeping her distance if she needs to. This guy is a fucking loser. What is this shit? How's that doing so much damage? It's a good thing he's not smart enough to cover my red. Yeah, and he's going back towards mid. Champions with boobs is flash art. That's a good one. There you go. Now we're clustering. We're chunking the chunks. So you can take those and then you try to find the small details that like... Um, it's like this. Anytime you get a fucking thought in your head, try to argue against it. Just for like three seconds, try to argue against it. This guy's kind of fucked, but maybe we can kill the Wukong? I'll try to save him. Can you ulti him for me? He's gonna e ulti, I gotta run. Um... So it's like this, like what I just did there was really important for you guys to understand. I put some people with commonalities together off of one dimension, right? Just range, effective range, let's say. And then I found reasons to, to separate them. <sighs> that way I'm a lot more accurate with my thinking, right? Because if I'm thinking of a build that works with close range, like I, I need to go close because, I don't know, Golden Ages, right? I have to hit them with my, my W in order to proc them a winter. Okay, these champions I tend to fare pretty well against because if they're hitting me, I can hit them with W, right? That's just the definition of, of, of the range. If you can hit me, I can hit you, right? So, okay, I get a lot more shielding against these, these guys because they have to play within a certain range. Um, does that mean that it's automatically good? Well, I get the shield, sure, but does it matter? Now I have to figure out whether it matters or not. Does a shield matter against a Samira? Probably. Right? If she's just fighting me, it'll matter. Does it matter when Samira has her ultimate up? No. No, it, does, it, it absolutely does not. She's going to shred me through the shield. Right? But at least, at least I have something. At least I have a shield. So now i got to figure out, okay, if a shield doesn't do too much against a Samira when she has ultimate, what will? Will anything actually help me against a Samira? Xhanius, uh, Stasis, I can literally just invuln it. Or I could just play with my team and, you know, wait for them to CC. So if my team has no CC to stall the Samira and I need to hold my EQ, right? Okay, maybe that's the method. Maybe I shouldn't think about a solve coming from the items. I should think of a solve coming from my abilities, right? You see how like there's so many fucking factors here. Your team, the way the team plays, what kind of CC you have, whether or not you're going to have your EQ available for this kind of shit. That's why controlling for variables is really difficult. But it's a start. It's a start. You understand this. And the way you do this, the way you learn in League of Legends is you, you take every fucking game you play, every single instance, every single skirmish, and you input that, and you think about, how did I play that fight? What could I have done better? That's how you learn in school, too. But that's how you should. Thanks, Sinai. Good luck on your exams, man. Let's just set up here. Nice, good. I'm not going for the Malphite, I'm going for the Lucian. He's a DPS threat. Smite this guy, good. 
Ulti both. I can Q here. Good. Let's E this. We can Q through the, the crab. Be maximally efficient. Wukong's coming, Pike's coming. When Pike hooks, I can buffer it. He went for a prediction. He doesn't know that I don't have to do that. Want to do an Omega tourney? Sure. Only because I know you're on my friends list. Do you see yourself ever going back to uni later? If I have to. I don't belong in a classroom. I can't pay attention. Not because I don't respect the professor or anything, it's just... It's just too much. I'm gonna go here, I have my Yasuo next to me. Nope, he's not coming. Alright, I need to... Nope, he just ditched. I don't think he saw. I think he just, uh, I think he was tunneled on this. Okay. <laughs> my bad. That's my bad. I just gave up 600 for free. <sighs> I was ready to go on that with my guy. I think he was like over here or so. Somewhere in the jungle. He can always ulti from a distance. Fuck. That was really dumb. I think I should ping him next time. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I would like voice comms. But it might be overall painful for the uh, community. This is already a divided community. And like, Kylo is so established that like, if you threw in voice comms now, people already don't like each other off of grudges and shit like that. No one's, no one's gonna play. You can already see this, like, Champion's Q is a microcosm of Hilo, right? Like, it's a, it's a smaller set of Hilo players, but it's still Hilo players. And like, when I play Champion's Q, everyone fucking muted. Everyone's socially awkward. Like, I, I, okay, I was nice when I was in it, but I'm not gonna be nice now that I'm out of it and I can, you know, open the, uh, speak. But they're all socially fucking awkward nerds. Let's be honest. Half these fucking pro like the think about what it takes to become a pro player in League of Legends. You have to be a fucking loser. That is the default requirement. What kind of loser devotes this many years of his life to a video game? I'm not ulting there. If he pings my ulti, I'd laugh. And the reason why we don't ulti there is because it's not guaranteed kill. Plus I might end up just dying myself. Why? He dashes, he ultis. Where's his ulti? No ulti? He's got Gale Force, right? Alright, he didn't use any of his tools, I guess.
Went to the same high school as you, but you're younger. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I know a couple of lads. If voice comms happen in league, it's gonna be old school COD lobby. No, no, it wouldn't be. It'd be worse. You see, it's easy when someone throws a slur at you to be like, "Oh, look at this guy." This guy's a piece of shit. It's a lot harder to paint someone as a piece of shit when they're being passive aggressive. Because although we all know that being passive aggressive is a piece of shit behavior, right? It's 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 not the easiest to just put on someone. Wukong's behind me. I'm gonna feign back, go back towards the Annie. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Wait for that Wukong ulti. Ah shit, I thought that was the same one. Good. I see the pike, he's my next target. Let's just hope they forgot. And he has TP in 8. They split. They made a mistake. He's gonna dash to the left wall? No? And he's coming at me where? Okay. Try to tank her out. Don't give her vision. Oh, dodge that. Good. Watch the Annie, watch the Annie. Let's see where she goes. Actually, I'll just take out her, uh, her thing. Oh my fuck. If I knew the Lucian was going to dash over, I would have just killed him. I made a mistake. Bimble shielding? Yep. Yeah. Alright, even though I, I don't like the Pantheon, I don't like what the Lissandra's doing to him right now. Okay, I was gonna finish my point. Like, when someone's passive-aggressive and just saying snarky, annoying shit, it's, it's, it's just infinitely harder to get a crowd of people to be like, look at this piece of shit, he's being an asshole. Right? And I hope most of you guys agree with this, because it should be very obvious. It should be plainly fucking obvious. If someone murders someone, boom, gone, right? Like, beyond a shadow of a doubt, gone. Right? If someone just kind of like assaults someone, punches them, but kind of in self-defense, it's harder. It's a lot harder, right? That's why it's a lot more egregious to me. The the, the kids nowadays, holy fucking shit, dude. Like, they, they, they don't have the, the, the balls to like say something. I'm not saying that you should be throwing around slurs, but like they don't have the balls to like say something to someone's face or like aggressive. Instead, they do the nah, nah, but like why are you building like this? Nah. Fucking kids, man. I hate this shit. They're such pussies, dude. Such pussies, and this is a sweeping statement, so don't don't you know don't take this too serious, but immigrant family kids used to have some fucking respect. Used to. Let's get face rush and get the fuck out of here. Save my team. Not to be too big of a fucking boomer on this, but like holy shit, like if you come from an immigrant family, what the fuck? Did they not did they not discipline your ass? Where the fuck are you, bro? Let's take the blast cone. Separate from my team. I got him. Oh shit. These fights suck. Like dude, if you're an immigrant kid past like 2002, it's not okay to beat your ass, right? It's not okay to beat your It's not okay in general. But the people before 2000s, right? I'm like at the tail end of that. If you got your ass beat, holy fuck, I, I probably, like even, I, I still talk shit, but like damn, you definitely didn't fucking talk shit if you got disciplined.
This is this is one of the hottest takes I'll have. It's like, dude, we gotta we gotta find an in between. We gotta we gotta find like some spankings or like hand slaps, you know, for these fucking kids. They just talk too much. Yo, I meet like two thousand five kids that that chirp at me. I'm like, dude, you're talking to me? Like, what the fuck? Like, I wouldn't dream of speaking to anyone the way they these kids do. Like, just right off the bat. Like, if you talk to me, you say some shit. Yeah, of course I'm gonna fucking talk back to you. But like, starting off with like complete disrespect i'm like dude how the fuck do, in your brain do you do this how is it possible for you to speak like this and like be okay with that I'm gonna dash over the wall i'm gonna just ulti early that's a fucking crazy one i don't even think solo queue is actual kids no no but but here's the thing they never grew up past 14 right like you stunt yourself when you don't when you don't go into like hold on no, not good, not good. You absolutely stunt yourself by just sitting here all day playing video games. Like, it's a good thing I actually went out sometimes. I'm like, give me a second here. I'm watching for the Annie. I'm gonna queue back to the flag for the Wukong as well. He cloned, but I think I got him. I see the Annie in the Zonius. Need to kill her. Good. I'll just flash out. guys um no I, I i can beat these guys no ulties right i have to be very fucking good at buffering the cc i will stall them with my life let's just take a chance okay block the malphite from hitting me stand on this side i'm gonna use the gates here they can't hit me i'll come back to the flag no i won't i'll go for this guy instead We'll use the flag in a second. Oh, dude, he had ulti. What the fuck? I tried to stall for my team. I got one kill, though. I need armor. What would be best? Divine Sunder has healing. I don't think I'll go Thormel just for that. I need to crack through the MR, but they have some MR now. We need to press R on the Wukong. That's best case. It's a it's the silver lining for Wukong uh, or Malphite ulting me. Watch the Annie, watch the Annie. Nice try. Uh, what do I get? I think Randuin's is just best. Probably mitigates the most. I'll stand in front of the hook. Damn. We have to do the dragon, but I'm too low. Me not showing on the wave tells the Lucian that I, uh, that I'm going for the dragon. What do I do? I start it, I bait him over. I leave after he uses cooldowns. We'll go in the bush to deny vision, we'll ward over here. Let's see if he fights me. I got Milio now. I don't think I need a safe smite. I'm sure I can get to the Baron. I have Randuins now. Okay, good. Frozen hard for bigger shields. If you do the calculation, you'll see how stupid that is. Just off memory, frozen hard is four hundred. It's eight percent for film Winter, Eight percent of four hundred is thirty-two. I'm not. I'm not buying frozen hard for thirty-two. I know the rock solid is a really good uh, thing, but I need more effective health here. Let's see if I was right. Four hundred mana. Eight percent mana. Yep. I'm gonna go for this actually. Good, we got his flash. My ulti is on a low cooldown. Let's start the Baron for them. I 
I'm gonna type it three times. Get the flank position. Oh, the fuck, they saw. It's okay, I got shields. I took zero damage. They went in, the Wukong's gonna go in, I'm gonna watch for the Annie. I'm gonna deny her any entry. Wow, I fucking failed my EQ, what am I doing? Not this one, though. Go for the Annie, go for the Annie, good. Watch the Wukong. Okay, he's coming down here. Good, 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 good. What's next? Malphite? Just position for Q. This guy uses ulti, remember? Or his flash, rather. Let's end the game. Okay, you tank for the wave because you can. And you want to keep as many minions alive as possible. I drop it once I take too much damage. Position my Q. Or my E, rather. It's a good thing the uh, Lucian trolled. It's a bad thing, but good temporarily, right? For me. Let's tank a little bit. Oh, I didn't want to go. Extra minions, extra damage on tower. Also, you want to keep them alive for the uh, backdoor thing. If you don't have any minions on uh, or near a tower, it'll take a lot less damage. Nice. I was kidding, by the way. I wasn't going to flame the Pantheon. But I wonder if you believe me. I never started. You know, this this misspelling of my name always tells me that this guy's got like I know it's a bit of a reach, but like there's like a little bit of a, like a background, you know, like you're, maybe you're used to saying it, you know. A little bit of a reach, but it always feels like it. <clears throat> Alright, any questions I missed? I just see a lot of compliments. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. I don't know, man. It's two keys away. I know. That's why I think it's, uh, you know, a little bit much.